Hey guys, Probleaky here today, and uh, we're going to be looking at the RS Gnaw Latch. Now I'm going to explain what that is a bit later, but right now we're going to go over the T flip flop. So this is what we've done last time, last episode if you haven't seen it. Um, T flip flop is a toggle. Um, and what people were saying is that, that it kind of reflects a lever, and yes it does, but a lever can only be activated by a player. Whereas this can be activated by a redstone. So that has a lot more applications than a lever does. Um, but an RS Gnaw Latch is very similar to a T flip flop in the functionality, except this this here only has one input, and that's this button. So no matter how, how many times we click this button, it's going to go backwards and forwards. So we only have one input. Which, of course, it doesn't just have to be a button, it can be a redstone signal, um, just like this. So this could be our, our input here, and this will change the state of our T flip flop as well. Um, but for now, we're just going to use a button. So now I'm going to go over what an RS Gnaw Latch is. Um, I'm going to explain it step by step, but first I'm just going to build one. I'm going to build uh, probably the easiest one to have a look at and examine. So, just... Sorry, <laughs> there we go. Right, so we've got this, this funky little thing here. Um, and I'll just show you what it does first. So if I... I don't even need to do that, to be honest. I'll just put buttons on this, it'll be easier. If I hit this button here... You'll see the redstone comes over here. If I hit this one, it goes back over there. Right, so what's happening here is that we have two not gates that, as we know, is a torch on the side of a block. And then if we send power through it, it will turn off. So we know that. We have two not gates. That's what's happening here. We have another one over here, which would be just there. And we want this torch here is going to turn off this block. So we're going to do that. So now this torch is deactivating this, this torch. And we're going to connect this torch up to this block. So what's happening, if we want to change the state of this, we simply need to turn off this torch because when this torch goes off, this torch will come back on. And we know that because we are supplying power to the block which is disabling the torch right now. And if we remove the power source, then this torch will turn back on. So this torch is now turned on, and because this is on, this torch is now off. So what this means is this has created a memory cell in that we have a set and a reset which is where the RS comes from in RS Gnaw Latch, because it's reset, set, um, Gnaw Latch. A latch is like a memory cell kind of thing. Um, so what we've done now, we've got our set button over here and our reset here. It doesn't matter, they can be either or. It really doesn't matter which one's which, to be honest, because you just need to get the output. So if we hit this button here, we're going to reset it. We'll, just, we'll call this button the reset and this one the set. So we've reset it to the default state, which is what we can see here. And if we set it, this will go to 1. So if we're going to use this as the the set button, we want this to be our output. So this can be our output to a piston over here. So now we've got it set, and if we want to reset it and put the piston away, we hit this one. So what what is this what is this good for? You're probably asking. It's it's similar to the T flip flop in that it's it, it toggles between on and off, but it has two inputs. One to set and one to reset. Because no matter how many more times we click this button, it's not going to change. Uh, we have to hit this one over here, and it will change. So we have to alternate buttons to be able to change which uh, which one's which. Um, I'll show you an easier... There's there's like a million different designs for the thing. I'll show you a few more that do the exact same thing, just in a different design. This one's smaller than the last, but does the exact same thing. You can see this is just a smaller design. If we put a button on this side here, and one over here, and it will just do the same thing, as you can see there. Um, now keep in mind, all these buttons I'm using are just inputs, so it can just be redstone, um, right here. I can just put a redstone line coming in here, and then activate it. It will do the same thing. I'm just using buttons because it makes it a lot easier just to demonstrate it real quick. Right, and then I'll just show you another design. Um, there's like a million different designs. As long as you have two torches that are turning each other off and or on, then it's going to be, uh, an RS Gnaw Latch. So we're going to bring this up here. This is a bit of a funky design. You bring it down like this. Have this torch here, and I think you put that there. I think that's how it goes. And then you put a reset here and a set up here. No, hit that one, and that comes on over there and turns off. This one's good because it's only one block wide. So maybe if you want to put heaps of them next to each other, it's one block wide and it works like that. Um, so these are just a few different designs. They all do the same thing. It doesn't really matter. I, I like this one just because it's really easy to see it. And I think it was the best one to explain it to you and, and what it does. So now we're gonna, what we're gonna do, we're just gonna build a little uh, example of what's gonna happen. Um, so I'm just gonna type in door. We're gonna get an iron door. I'll get rid of that, and we'll close that. Put the iron door down here. 
and we'll put a wall on either side. I'll just go time to set to zero, just so the sun doesn't set on us. Right, okay, so then we're gonna have a button not next to the door, because that will open it anyways. We'll just chuck it out here somewhere, it doesn't really matter. I'm just gonna expose all the redstone so you can see it. And we're gonna build an RS null latch just next to the door, it doesn't matter where. I'm, just gonna, I'm gonna build the small one, because it's smaller than the big one, and it does the same thing. So we've done this. Now, we're gonna wanna open the door when we hit this button. So, we're gonna need to drag this the, the line, the power of this button over to the RS null latch, and I probably haven't built it in a very good location to be honest, because this is gonna have to <laughs> go all the way around. So we'll chuck it into that one there, this line here. We could actually just do it here to be honest. Um, but obviously, hitting this right now is not gonna do anything. We're actually, I've changed my mind. We're gonna make this button close the door. So, if we do that there, and then we're gonna have to make another button, of course, because we can't do anything without another input. So I'm gonna to come to this side and put a button, and we'll just attach it to this line here. So now if we hit this button, the door's gonna open. So just, let's say we're inside the house, we wanna open the door to get out. Um, we can't close it from the inside, which is obviously probably not the best function, but anyways. So we've opened the door, and we've left the house now. We're gonna close it with this button. Um, so this button is not gonna allow anyone to get into the house if you're outside. So this is like um, what I said before, we're gonna open a door from one side, but not the other. So we can't open the door from the outside. We can only open the door from the inside of the house by this button right here. So as you can see, this whole circuit just changes state when you hit the button. Um, this is probably not the best example, uh, but it, it demonstrates it practically what it does. Um, right, so we now have a T flip flop over here. I'm just gonna quickly jump over here. We've learned a lot of things in the past few episodes. We've got a T flip flop, which has one input, which is right here. Changes backwards and forwards in that. And we have our RS null latch, which is this bad boy right here, which changes state backwards and forwards with two inputs. Right, so I think we have learned enough, and we, we of course know all our other logic gates that I've taught you about before, not that there. We've got our not gate as well. We've got to remember that. This comes off like that, oh gosh. Like that, turns on and off. Uh, we've got our and gate as well, that we know. That goes something like this. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Let me check a torch here. This is our AND gate, as we know. Let's check two inputs here. So if I hit these real quick together, it'll work. Um, and then of course we've got our OR gate, which is simply just going to be a block like this. And we need to put another block here. This is our OR gate right here. So we have our output here, and then our our inputs are going to be here. As many, pretty much, you can have three inputs into this because we've got one on each side of the block. So it's going to be to activate the other side. So I think you're going to need one input, so that one, or this one, or this one over here, or you can do multiple, of course. That's our OR gate, and we also learned our NAND gate as well, which is the same as the AND gate, just with this part removed. So that's our NAND gate there. Right, so we know all these gates, so if you don't know what I'm talking about right now and you're completely lost, uh, episode 8, I believe, was on logic gates. Well, one of them is called logic gates. Go check that one out if you want to learn about that stuff. So we've learned a lot of stuff in the past few episodes, and we're going to put it into practical use in the next one. We're going to build a really cool gadget um, with minecarts, and I'm going to demonstrate how all this stuff can work together to make some really, really cool things. So until then, guys, I'm Flabaliki, and thanks for watching.